Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thank you for joining me today. We're talking about artillery projectiles today, and before we get going, I would love for you to tell me what do you think is the better artillery projectile, the standard NATO 155mm high explosive round, or the Russian 152mm high explosive projectile round? Let me know, and of course, uh, I'd love to hear your debate and comments in the comment section below, my personal opinion, and preference is the 155 millimeter and that's not because of bias it's just truly based upon the opinion of how effective a projectile can be manipulated in various configurations because the 155 has so many different variants we've got Excalibur we've got what we're going to be talking over today but there's just lots of features that I think the 155 provides that the 152 doesn't that doesn't mean that the 152 is not a good projectile but I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section but today we are talking specifically about 155mm ammunition known as the Bonus or Bofors Nutuating Shell. This is a unique, I would say, cluster artillery round developed in cooperation between Bofors of Sweden and Next of France designed for a long-range indirect top attack role against armored vehicles. It is quite the functionality of a weapon system. Now, cluster munitions isn't new. This isn't new. This has been around for a long time. But what I find interesting about Bonus is the specific accuracy of what this thing can do you've got to look at the physics of artillery ammunition and what is going on inside a projectile when it's not only released from the barrel but when it's actually heading over the trajectory to get to somewhere the pressures released from a barrel acting and the forces acting upon that projectile always baffles me and when we start putting technology in something like this it truly is just almost wizardry levels of uh, engineering because the bonus is using technology inside of there that actually creates two submunitions that allows it to pinpoint accurately destroy tanks from a height. Um, we're not talking about something that just pops canisters everywhere and hopes for the best. These modules actually locate and track down armor and put a heated copper jet stream right through the top of it, which is absolutely incredible. Now, as you can see by this projectile of 155mm floating through the air, um, there is so much inertial force acting upon this round. It's really hard to kind of explain in all honesty and just using video footage. Uh, I am not a scientist, but what I will say is um, as a uh, you know artillery sergeant in the uh, Army Reserves here in Canada, we do a lot of discussion and, uh, you know, I guess debate even so about fuses, about projectiles, about how they work, how they function, because it's really important to be sort of close to subject matter expert before we go into the sort of warrant officer world. And I'm very interested about modernized artillery ammunition because we don't talk about it enough, I don't believe, uh, mainly because it's just so expensive. And the bonus is one of those projectiles that is certainly not cheap, but its capabilities is very fascinating. When we're looking at the modern battlefield of today and seeing how armor is really uh, prevalent in, of course, areas like Ukraine, um, the bonus projectile, although expensive, is giving you pinpoint accuracy cluster munitions that is taking out tanks and huge amounts of penetration. We're talking about almost, and I'm saying this because I'm only going on what I know, almost a foot's worth of penetration. That is a lot of armor penetration. Roll homogenous armor is obviously very strong, but when we look at a system like this, um, it is punching right through it. It even has capability to knock out certain ceramic armor plating. Very difficult to actually confirm that, but in all honesty, <laughs> this is doing some serious damage. You've also got to remember that it is coming from on top of the vehicle, not to the front hull or the main, I guess, uh, armored defense of the tank. It is coming right from above, and when it's looking for a target, it kind of finds that weak spot, which it knows is the center of mass of the turret, which is either going to be one of two of the commander or gunner's hatches, and will just pop right through the top of there with a high explosive copper stream. And that is absolutely devastating to armor. You know, explosively formed penetrators at that angle from above is insane. Now, as I said, you are creating quite a bit of, uh, you know, failure rate here too. These things aren't perfect. There's also going to be some inherent flaw when you're making technology of like this. There's not always going to be every single round works every single time. But in terms of what I've researched, it's about an 85 to 90% success rate in accurate engagements to armor, which is to me almost flawless. When we look at artillery, it's an area effect weapon. When we use standard high explosive rounds, they hit the ground, they make an explosion, and you hope for the best. Uh, you cluster your ammunition as much as you can together with the dispersal of what ammunition you're using. But for the most part, it's there to shock and awe, blow some bits and pieces off the side of a tank. If you get direct hits with HE rounds, we're absolutely great. With this projectile, you're actually getting a sensor-fused submunition binding 
the armor and pinpoint striking it from above. Um, the vehicles that uh, this is going for truly are, though, heavy armored vehicles. You're not going to be wasting, you know, bonus rounds, um, pardon the pun, on tanks that are anything less than sort of, you know, heavy armor, T-72, T-80, um, because it's just so expensive. You wouldn't be using it on BMPs, things like that. It's just not as practical. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a new concept or a new projectile. It's been in development with bonus uh, as a program in early 1985, and there was a study project created by the Swedish Defense Material Administration with an initial expectation of development completed by 1989 and production start by 1990. By 1990, the development completion date had actually slipped to 1992. There's a bonus base bleed carrier shell which contains two submunitions which descend over the battlefield with small little winglets and attack hardened targets with explosively formed penetrators. These warheads are devastating to arm. As you can see, the height in which they're coming down at, uh, knocking out just about anything you could think of. We've got artillery, small armored vehicles, tanks, and potentially even buildings. This little uh, demonstration here is actually going to show you the kind of penetration this thing can do. Next demonstration featured the bonus warhead. The warhead was mounted in a rotating test rig angled at 30 degrees to the axis of rotation, simulating the search phase. The firing range was 75 meters. The target was an 80 millimeter thick armor plate of 250 to 300 HB. The result, full penetration of the armor and of both witness plates. As you can see in that demonstration, it was only 80 millimeters of penetration and some witness screens, which isn't a huge amount. But you've got to remember, the design isn't to try and penetrate the frontal armor, as I said. It's to go through the hull uh, or the top of the tank, which is where it's obviously the most weak. And 80 millimeters, I would say, is a fairly substantial amount of average armor that we uh, are looking for this projectile to engage. Now, the maximum range of this projectile is around about 27 kilometers, which is a base bleed projectile. Base bleed basically means that the round has a vortex behind it or a sort of vacuum where the uh, pressure behind the projectile actually creates drag. When you put base bleed behind there, it's not a rocket, but it's almost like a little burner that just gets rid of that void and allows it to basically cruise through the air a lot faster, giving it a very good range of 27 kilometers with the 39 caliber barrel. It can go 35 kilometer with a 52 caliber barrel. Um, and at the moment, uh, this system is designed to be able to be used in just about every single NATO 155mm projectile a howitzer or artillery piece that's out there. Of course, in the future, there may be some customizable, you know, weapon systems that be coming out that could utilize it as well. But for the most part, it is all NATO artillery pieces that are firing this particular projectile. Now, because it is a NATO round, uh, it is very, very easy to produce in mass. Um, of course, artillery in general at the moment is struggling to get ammunition for their stores. I think we all know that's a very large problem with the amount of ammunition being donated right now. Uh, for this particular projectile, there's certainly not as many in stock because they are more complex and more expensive. The round itself consists of 47 kilograms of projectile containing two autonomous sensor-fused fire-and-forget submunitions. When the submunition is released, it opens those two winglets, and while it descends, the submunition rotates, scanning the area below with multi-frequency infrared sensors and LIDAR. That compares the detected vehicles with programmable target databases that are in there, basically meaning that the radar can sense what's a chunky bit of metal and what's a little piece of metal, and differentiate which projectile or which area you want it to engage. The submunitions then each contain a high penetration EFP warhead for use against even the heaviest armored fighting vehicles, including the main battle tank. Now, when you're looking at something like this, you're obviously going to strategically utilize these weapons. As I mentioned, you're not going to use them against a small mechanized force. You're going to be primarily getting these things to hunt for the higher rate tanks that are on a battlefield or even, you know, C2 nodes or com combination of that, you know, armor and command modules that you may want to take out. Uh, it could also be very useful for seed, um, which is obviously trying to prevent air defense, uh, suppression of enemy air defense, which is also very, very useful if you can take out air defense before aircraft come in with a couple of these things being fired into the uh, area. It's going to have a huge amount of benefit to any forces in the area. Now, 
What happens is, is the phase one is when the, uh, basically the round is fired, standard tube of any gun. The round then goes on a parabolic arc with a range of up to, as I said, 35 kilometers. A timer fuse ignites the small ejector rocket in the nose, which drags the two submunitions out of the shell casing of the target area. Once clear of the shell, the submunitions fall to the target and the shell and the nose assembly fall away. The two submunitions then deploy winglets and independently corkscrew down in the overall area, but then look down into a subject area with a rotational speed of around 900 RPM, finding the key target at once. Once the submunition detects the target vehicle beneath it, it detonates its explosive payload, creating that explosively formed projectile which strikes the vehicle's weak top armor, and the high velocity impactor penetrates the hull, kills, wounds, or absolutely mutilates the armor inside of it. Now the bonus is very similar to the German Smart 155mm system. The Smart descends on a parachute rather than a system of winglets, and uses a millimeter radar as an altimeter instead of lidar. The United States developed the similar M89 SAD arm system, which also descended onto uh, attacking various types of top surface armored vehicles, but this was discontinued in favor of GPS guided M9082 Excalibur rounds, which of course is highly, highly um, utilized in modern day capabilities for artillery, but also very, very expensive. The US artillery largely deploys the M712 Cophead laser guided round for the anti tank role, but of course, we do know there are cluster munitions that have very similar capabilities of that utilized on aircraft, which in all honesty makes a lot more sense with aircraft because they have a lot further interdiction than what artillery would have, and if you want something that's more precise, uh, aircraft is certainly the way to go. Now, in the operational history of this projectile, it's pretty obvious it's being used in Ukraine in various aid packages that were sent to it by France and Sweden and Norway. There were some rumors about a mentioned kill of a Russian Panzer S1 system on July 5th, 2022, but it turned out that that was actually committed by a smart 155mm projectile. In January 2023, there were photos of 155mm bonus submunitions found in Ukraine, which is the first confirmed proof of their use. Now, when we look at cluster munitions, I talk about the failure rate. Um, this is certainly something to be concerned about. You know, when you're using ammunition like this, cluster munition or have sub munitions, there's always a chance of failure because artillery projectiles, as I said at the beginning, quite complicated, a lot of physics and inertial energy happening on these systems, electronics inside of that, they don't always work to the best. Um, so when you have leftovers from that, you do have risk of people getting hurt who shouldn't be hurt, uh, having to, you know, do ordnance disposal of these kinds of munitions that don't function correctly. It is definitely a negative of using something like Bonus uh, or the Smart System from Germany. So I would love to hear your opinion on this system. Do you think this is something that we're going to see a lot more of and that this technology is going to get cheaper so that they can be more mass produced and the high explosive standardized projectile is slowly but surely going to be phased out personally as an artilleryman i don't think that's ever going to happen i think we'll always have a place for a standard point detonating he round because they're just the beast um but of course technology will adapt uh, 3d printing and all these other you know sophisticated ways of making things more cheap to produce are starting to come out more and more in the days ahead and i do think things like bonus are going to be a lot more applicable as we go through the next 10 to 15 years of artillery uh, technology and advancements. So let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, please, guys, if you have been supporting me on Patreon and PayPal financially, I cannot thank you enough. If you do want to go check out those links, they are in the description box below. I appreciate each and every one of you for doing that. It really does mean a lot to me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I am also sponsored by Attire for Effect. They're a clothing brand. Uh, they make artillery themed clothing, which is very specific to today's uh, video. So if you want to go check them out, go to www.attireforeffect.com uh, and go check out all their artillery themed clothing and flags and patches and decals and stickers. They've got all sorts of cool stuff. Go check them out. Thanks again for joining me, folks. All the best. Bye bye.